That ought to do it. I had this old piece of two by four steel laying around and I thought that it would be perfect for using as a spacer on my gate latch. Now, if you missed, uh, what was that? Might've been the last video, might've been the video before, I don't remember. I installed a gate over my corral and we had a little bit too much of a gap there for the latch to work. So I think screwing this into the wall is gonna solve that problem. There is a little bit of pre-work that needs to happen to this piece before it's ready to be installed. So I'm gonna do that first here in the shop, then we'll run it down to the ranch and see if we can make this all work. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. That's why I usually clamp things down. You try to be lazy once and that's what happens. Got a hole. I was going to do my shot of this is what it looks like when it's done, and then I realized I'm not done yet. Let's try this again. for the garbage can. Back to the drill press. Got it. Every one of these holes started out as a 3 8 hole all the way through and then as you saw I took the 13 16 bit here and drilled through on one side and some of you know why I did that. For those that don't, you're about to find out. Dirty now. Look at all that. It's like, a, it's like a big salt shaker. We'll put our gate latch on this way. Look at that. Our 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 holes mostly line up. fits perfectly. Can turn this baby up on its side. Since I'm using a deep socket, I'll put two nuts in there so that I've always got one right out here at the end. It should be easier to start that thread. Should be easier. I might, um, I might not say that in a minute, but we're gonna try it. That one. So far, so good. Try that one. Yep, it started. So, why go through all the trouble to do things this way? Well, now. This gate latch is replaceable in case it breaks or something happens and I just, you know, whatever, it's replaceable. And the two by four piece of steel can fit flat up against a wall, which it's gonna have to do. 
So let's get this loaded up and a few other tools and we'll go see if we can make this work. And real quick, if you're wondering why this piece is on here, it's only because it was already on there and I just, it's kind of a pain to get it off of there. And I'm wondering if it might come in handy for something like a safety chain or something like that. So I'm leaving it on for now. Um, I may end up taking it off later, but if it's not in the way, it's probably just gonna live right there. And here we are. You like that? Gosh. You guys have eaten a lot already. I gave these bulls a round bale two or three days ago, I think, and I'm surprised at how much they have eaten already. I know they've still got a little bit of grass in their pasture here, but I guess this time of year, they just, they kind of prefer the hay. All right, let's take this over where it's gonna go and kind of mock it up and see if this is all gonna work. get us close on this building we are dealing with a round post so really i want to try to install the metal piece that i've got here close to the center of that so that the lag screws can really bite into it the best like possible way that they can so because of that that means that this has to be in a little bit if this was a square post this would actually work a lot better but it's not so we gotta work with what we've got. And what I don't like about what I'll have to do is that when this is all installed and the gate is latched, it's gonna be in a little bit on the buildings. What I'm worried about is that since we rapidly go from a slightly wider spot to a slightly narrower spot, that it'll encourage the cows to turn around right here. And then that'll put a lot of extra stress and pressure on this gate because as they turn around, they're hitting it with their hip and they're, you know, they're going to be pushing on it. So I don't like that necessarily, but I don't really see another way around this. I guess the good thing is that, you know, we're not welding anything in place. So if I do need to change this or modify it, it's pretty easy to take apart again. And, you know, odds are that this will be fine. It's just sort of a really... A minor criticism that I've come up with here and maybe it won't even be a big deal at all But we'll just kind of have to use the loading chute a few times and you know, then we'll find out I'm gonna put the latch pin on the gate first because it can only go in certain places and the latch on the other hand We can move and put it wherever we want. So we'll put this and then let it locate the other piece Since we're mounting this on square tubing, which I don't think it was really designed to do I'm going to use these C-clamps to, to pinch it down and sit on there a little bit flatter and then I can drill the hole in my uh, little piece of flat bar here. Yeah. Alright, let me get the drill. Trying to tighten this with a 916, so I don't think that's actually what it is. I'm sure it's metric. We do have a problem here, but it's easy to solve. Um, you notice that the bolts here are sticking out, and you, you got to remember we're dealing with a narrow alleyway here. When, when cattle are scrubbing by this, there's a good chance that they're going to hit themselves on these bolts and and hurt themselves. So before we load any cattle through this chute, I'm going to have to come back with the grinder and cut these off. Sure looks like it will work actually so this is a little difficult to do by myself but while the gate was closed with the latch pin in the latch I made some marks on the building of where the top of the rectangular tube should go my plan is to kind of hold this in place where I think it ought to be and then drill a hole through but I should be able to at least see where I need to be. 
So these are the lag screws here. They gotta be long enough because remember, we're going through a two inch steel beam and then the two by fours are holding the tin about two inches off of the post. So there's another two inches. So four inches of this lag screw will not even be in the wood. It'll just be this last little bit here. So I've got an extra long pilot bit to make sure that I can get back to where I need to go. That should be it right there. I don't know what straight is, maybe about there. Let's test it. So if you just slam it, does it work? So far so good. Yeah, we're still, we're hitting just a little bit, but that's easily fixable. That works, that's gonna work. And the nice thing about the two by four here is it fills this gap in a little bit too. So, nice. All right, let's get the rest of them in. And I don't know if you guys can see, but as the lag screws get tight, they're sucking this in a little bit. So by the time I get the fourth one in and get them all cinched down, we may not even have to trim that pin at all. This lag screw here, you see how the washer is loose, but the impact won't go any further with it. It's just a 3 8 impact, so that's not a huge surprise. Uh-oh, did I just break it? <laughs> uh you know what we're gonna leave it just how it is all right let's try it one more time see if we ate up that uh clearance issue and yeah this is this is coming along uh i don't want to get too happy but it's coming along good well i mean technically i can do it I'll say that's good. Let's give it a, uh, a minimal durability test. I mean, hopefully that's strong enough. I don't know. Obviously a cow can push it a lot harder than I can. I am so happy with this. I, I just can't really explain. This has been a problem area in the corral I mean, really as long as I can remember. I can remember my grandpa trying to solve this problem and that's when we hit the water line with the post hole digger. There's just never been a good solution to this until now. And I, this is one of those times where it's, I, I wish that he could see this because I think this would make him happy. And I mean, really what, what allowed me to be successful where it was hard for him is just the tools that we have now the things that are available to us like this latch for instance if the local farm store didn't have this 20 years ago you just didn't get it and now if the local farm store doesn't have it which it didn't you can just order one and have it shipped to your house the next day so this is a huge check off of the to-do list that i'm i'm really happy about so one last thing that needs to happen to this gate and some of you already know this but we're going to hang a sheet of plywood on it to to really block the visual through this gate. And once we do that, then I think we'll have her done. 84 and three quarters, remember that. Let's see how good I measured. Okay. 
Right now we're just hanging on with clamps, but I think we're ready to put in some bolts. That looks pretty good to me. And I think some people were maybe confused of my explanation of why I wanted the plywood on the inside instead of the outside of the gate. I know I didn't explain that very well. Um, sometimes I just can't find the right words to say what I'm trying to say. But now that it's up, I'm hoping that it makes a little bit more sense what I was talking about. You just have, it just streamlines everything and there's less visual distractions for the cattle as opposed to looking at the back side of the panel where you can see the pipe it's kind of cluttered and it just i don't know hey you know what maybe it doesn't make any difference at all but it certainly looks better to my eye so i feel like it's going to look better to them as well and when i say looks better i'm not saying like it looks nicer or more pleasing to my eye when you're building stuff like this you got to think about it from the standpoint of a cow you got to think how a cow thinks and when we're trying to get her to walk up this alleyway, we just want no distractions. We want her to walk up to that trailer once she's decided that she's gonna do it. And we don't want anything to make her stop or balk or second guess her decision. And that can be as simple as a jacket hanging on a fence. It could be, I mean, any anything that's different or sort of out of the ordinary makes them stop and think. They don't, I don't think they process information like as quickly as humans do. So you just want to eliminate anything like that that could cause a problem. In fact, that's the whole reason why you see a lot of corrals now with solid sides. That's why I put solid sides in here as well, because I noticed when I built the tub here with the solid sides that once they got in the tub, they moved really well because there was just nothing else that they could see, nothing else that would distract them from doing what I wanted them to do. The reason why I can't do solid sides everywhere or why I don't want to do solid sides everywhere is because when you've got a solid sided fence, it's very hard to climb over it in the event of like a cow's coming at you and you need to get out of the way. This fence would be very hard to scale, whereas this fence would be pretty easy. It's, it's essentially just a ladder, right? So these are the things that you got to think of. That's why I've got one solid side on this alleyway. And then I do plan to just leave this as an open rail so that if I'm trying to load a cow that way, sometimes they get a little grumpy and they come back this way. They want to, you know, not go that way. So they come at you this way. And if they're a little perturbed, it's nice to be able to climb up the fence and get out of the way. Cattle are sensitive to visual distractions, but even worse than them are buffalo or bison, I should say. And in a bison corral, you will see all solid sides pretty much exclusively throughout the corral. What a lot of the bison guys do is on a solid sided fence, they'll just attach a, a mid rail, like a two by four or something right up against the solid wall so that you can grab the top and then you've got something to put your foot on so that you can climb over and get out of the way. I'm very happy with how this turned out. In fact, it's, you know, probably about as good as I pictured it would be or, you know, hoped that it would be. The best part about this is I pretty much, well, I won't say I have no money into this because I did have to buy the latch. And while I didn't buy the plywood, I borrowed it from something that will need a sheet of plywood again so I'll, I'll have to replace it so we'll say that i had to buy the plywood as well but still less than 100 bucks not including my time and all that which i usually don't although you're supposed to i guess um but yeah this i mean for mostly being made out of stuff i had laying around i couldn't be happier with this all right so now that that's done that was kind of the main goal of today because this afternoon we got to take Belly to her first vet appointment to get her 
going on all of her vaccines and that sort of thing um, just get her checked out because of in the way that we got her we really don't know what her history is or if there's any kind of problem with her I, I don't think so but it'd be nice to just have a vet lay some eyes on her but before I do that there is another thing that I would like to try her I mean I'm not gonna get it done in this video but we can at least get started with it and you might have noticed that I was sort of working my way over towards the shoot as I was saying all that and the reason is I want to talk again about the ratchet a bunch of you guys sent me resources for powder river parts which I greatly appreciate and I I've kind of come to the conclusion that the modern ratchet will not just be a bolt-in replacement like I was hoping that it would be as some of you mentioned I yes I could have a machine shop cut me out a new piece here a new ratchet with finer teeth but the more I got to thinking about it the more I thought you know I could probably do that myself now, granted it won't be cast iron so it won't be as strong but I think I could at least cut something out that would bolt in here with a little bit of a finer tooth pattern and just just see if this idea would even work. Maybe with smaller teeth, that paw will have a tendency to slip and not hold tight like it does now. And if that's the case, then I don't wanna pay a machine shop a bunch of money to make something that doesn't work. So I think if I cut this out out of regular mild steel, which I have a hunk of half inch thick um, by like eight inch flat bar, which I think this would be just the perfect size to cut out of that. But I think if I do this myself, then I can, like I say, at least test this idea, see if it's even worth pursuing. Before we get the original ratchet off of there, I wanna take some measurements so that I know how much I improved or didn't change anything. Um, there's no way to know that if we don't take some measurements right now. What we're worried about or what we can measure here is how much the two parts of the head gate move in with each click. So right now, if I measure, I'm gonna, I have to pick a, a point that I can easily find again when I put the new ratchet on. We'll just go right here at this top pipe on the white part of the fence and just go straight across. So we're 26 and a half right there. Now I'll click the ratchet one time and we'll measure it again. Same spot here, straight across. And we're about 23 and a quarter. Really it's like 23 and 3 eighths, but for the sake of discussion, let's say 23 and a half. So that's a three inch swing there. Let me click it one more time to see if this is consistent, which it should be. So we should be like 20 and a half now. Yeah, that's exactly what we are, 20 and a half. So three inches with each click. I mean, think about that, three inches. That is a lot when you're talking about squeezing on a cow's neck, that's like, any wonders I'm always struggling to get one more notch on there because that that's a lot of swing I'm kind of surprised the last video where I talked about this I think I even said three inches because I know that I've measured this before but then when I said it I was like nah I can't be three that's too much it's it must have been like one or two but now I'm thinking if we could get this down to one or two that would be pretty good I guess the good thing about that is I feel like the bar is pretty low. We should be able to improve that. I don't want to say easily, but I just, I'll just leave it at that. We should be able to improve that. Come on, you're right there. So my hope is that I can use the old ratchet here as a template, trace this shape out on my half inch steel, and then draw a new tooth pattern where these teeth will have to be a little bit shorter and a little bit closer together to make all this work. I think that if I measure the distance between the peaks of the teeth, and we know that 
with this distance we get three inches on the head gate itself that I can then figure out what the new swing will be based on the new measurement of the new teeth. I don't know if I'm making sense there, but we'll be doing some, you know, solving for X and all that fun stuff that I thought I would never use in the real world. Well, it might actually come in handy for this. In fact, let's do that. The distance between the peaks of the teeth on the ratchet is three quarters of an inch. 0.75 over three would be equal to let's say we could get this down to half an inch so we'll go 0 0.5 would be what so 0.75 x would equal 3 times 0 0.5 which would be 1.5 and we divide by 0 0.75 to get I think that's two, right? Because points, yeah, three quarters of an inch plus three quarters of an inch is an inch and a half. So it would be, it would take us from a three inch swing down to a two inch swing. So the math tells me that this is probably worth doing. Uh, we could we could shave an entire inch off of that swing. I think that in itself might make enough difference to kind of fix this problem but another thing that i have thought about doing and one of you mentioned it as well is to change the pivot point on the actual lever itself so by by moving this arm up this arm a little bit like if i was to drill a couple of more holes on this one to where i can move this arm up and then the same thing on the top move it down I have now reduced the amount of swing per swing of this lever. That is confusing. I have reduced the amount of head gate travel per swing of the big lever. Maybe that makes more sense. So what this does is as I move the handle, this is traveling a shorter distance, which means I also have more power as I pull down but I have less speed. So you, you give up a little bit to gain a little bit, but I, I never have really felt like speed's a big issue with this. I think travel is a bigger issue. So that might be worth looking at too, would be to drill some new holes into this piece and change these, um, change these angles or these, I don't know what the proper terminology is, but change them a little bit so that the swing is different. And possibly doing those two things might be able to get us down to like an inch or an inch and a half per click on the ratchet. And I think that would probably be about perfect. So the squeeze chute definitely gives me a lot to think about, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm on the right track, I think. Um, if you guys have ideas, I'm, I'm always open to hear them. And if for some reason you know that my math doesn't work, let me know because uh, I think it does, but honestly, that's not really my specialty. So it may not. Anyway, you slice it. We got a lot done today. I'm really happy with the way this turned out and I'm looking forward to using it. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.